Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, yeah, a bit of a different angle day. Normally, the camera is more over to there. And the reason why you've got a wider view today is because I've got a lot of stuff to show. So, I've seen this challenge on YouTube so many times, and I really wanted to try and do it myself. And that is the Cheap Art Supplies Challenge, which is where you normally go to a shop like Poundland, Dollar Tree, whatever you are, buy inexpensive art supplies and produce artwork out of it. To show that cheap expensive supplies doesn't necessarily mean good artwork and that you can make good art with anything really. I went shopping yesterday, I got some stuff from Poundland that's all in this bag. So I'll show you that in a sec. And while I was there, I was like, you know what, I'll go pop into this shop called Work that we have in the UK. I've never really bought art supplies from there before except for sketchbooks, which I do really like. I've never bought paints, pencils, even that type of stuff. And so I thought, you know what, let's go there. But I did not realise how more expensive it is. So here we got a bag full of stuff from the works as well, which I'm going to show you. And so that's more expensive, like more expensive to be a different category. Let's put some perspective into it. I spent £10 at Poundland, £9 to £10. I spent 30 quid at the works. So yeah, um, instead this is now going to be a cheap versus inexpensive art challenge. As these aren't the most expensive supplies in the world and if they're really good for a price it might be a really good recommendation. However I still want to do the cheap art supplies challenge because I found some weird stuff I really want to experiment with. So let's just pick random things at a time. So the first thing I got here is this card and so I, I don't have to go through prices, this is from Poundland, everything is a pound, it's like Dollar Tree in America, everything's a dollar, everything's a pound. So here you get a 30 pack of white paper, white card, 200 GSM, I probably don't think it's going to be good, like paints or markers, stuff like that, but it was the thickest paper that they had there, other than that they had really thin craft paper. So yeah, this is what I had to go for, as I want to try and do everything using the cheaper supplies. Okay, following this, what else do I get? Um, what are these? Oh yeah, um, I got a pack of eight crayons. And so these are twistable ones where the end comes out here, so like a little defined package. You can get these from Crayola, but the Crayola brand, and so this is just Pal and Knockoff. I don't know if these will be good or not, but I'm interested to find out. So yeah, that's them. What's next in here? Oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. These are the things I was talking about, which are really weird. So these are also crayons. But as you can see by the colours, they've got like multi-pattern, it's like camo pattern on it. And the crazy colours, multi-coloured wax crayons. So I don't know if these will be good or not. I don't know how to use these properly. It's like literally at every angle, it'll be a different colour. So I'm interested to swatch these. Um, general pack of pencils. Um, yeah, I use these all the time to be honest. However, that's the one thing. When I went to works, I forgot to get it in pencil, so I'll probably just use these as well for sketching. Oh yeah, okay. So, Poundland didn't have markers. I thought they had like very cheap markers, but they don't. Instead, they have these thick and thin double end markers. They don't say anything on it, but I assume that they're water based and so they'll eat through the people like mad. I just hope one of them has like a thicker end, like it says thick and thin, but how thick is the thick? I don't know, I haven't looked at any of these. I highly doubt it's going to be a brush on one of them, but oh well. To go with the markers, I didn't find these. Now these aren't like your normal markers, these are probably water based as well, I'm not entirely sure. But well, if you ever use these as a child, these are magic markers. So often what you would normally do is that this colour, you put the colour down, so for example this blue, and then you draw over it with this white pen, and then it'll co come into this shade of blue. It's weird to explain, but it's supposed to change like magic. And honestly, I think it's just like bleach or something in there that just lightens the colour. That's all it does. Just lighten versions, but yeah. I thought that could be interesting to mess around with if hopefully they don't die instantly on me. Got some Tipex because use as white out and for highlights, just whiten paper out. Yeah, so you can't go wrong with that. 
got some zebra pens. So this was really hard to find because I couldn't find any fine liners at all. But I finally found some, but even then, I'm not sure if these are proper fine liners. Like, I don't know. Like, oh, they're not. Oh my god. It's a ballpoint. These are ballpoint pens. Oh well. We're still going to work with it. We're still going to use it as a liner. And then finally, got some gold and silver glitter pens. Just thought they could be nice to add accents on too. So yeah, this is what I got from Howland. Um, this all stuff, I th think it came to nine quid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, nine quid on all this. So I'm not expecting these to be best in the world. And don't worry, none of these are going to go waste. Whatever I don't use, I'm going to give to whatever people I know who need art supplies. I often give a lot of my stuff to my mum who uses it in church for crafting with all the kids and stuff. So yeah, so this is why I have for the cheap art supplies because these are the cheaper ones. Now let's go to work. So there's not as much in here because it was a lot more expensive. But we'll start with the bigger thing in here. So a pad of watercolour paper, 12 sheets, 300 GSM, cold press. Never tested this paper, so if it's good, then this might be a real steal. So this was three quid. Got some brushes, which were also three quid. These are just your normal synthetic brushes. So you can't really go wrong with these. Got a 12 pack of watercolour paints. So they're just as is. It says high quality. That will be tested. So yeah, that was also three quid. Now, got this big pack of colouring pencils, which were five quid. And you get 30 in here, so that's actually really quite a lot. I'm very fussy with colour pencils. Before my Arteza ones, I only religiously used the WH Smith ones. So I'm going to be very harsh on these, try and find out what they're like. And then finally, the biggest thing of them all, some alcohol markers. Yes, I found some alcohol markers. So these are 15 quid for 24 markers, but that does include a colourless blender. So that's 23 markers for 15 pounds. Hey guys, it is now the next day and I've been like, I had this idea when I was out on my walk this morning. I was thinking for the cheaper art supplies because they're mostly aimed at children. You can tell because you have the crayons of different colour like chalky things, the magic markers. I was going to do a kid based illustration and so I decided to do a dragon fighting a knight.
Hey guys, first thing I'm going to say is apologies for how long this video is. It's probably my longest speed paint I've done is because I've done two illustrations of this. I say two, it's like one and a half because as you'll see with this one, it doesn't turn out the best. But yeah, I'm going to try and keep this voiceover short and sweet as I haven't got really much to say that I don't really explain at the end of the video. So whatever I don't say now, I probably will mention at the end. So don't worry, it's not like I've forgotten anything. But as I said before, this is a challenge I did. So I went out with the intent of just trying the Poundland Art Supplies. And I'm glad that I picked up the Works Art Supplies, otherwise there would be no video today. The, this was a real challenge for me, trying to use these supplies, as they're just so not art supplies. They're definitely made for kids, and you can tell by the quality of them. I guess it's fun to use for like sketching or doodling or whatever, but to try and create actual illustration is such a challenge. I didn't think it would be this hard. Like, I was going in strong with these markers, I thought these were going to be the key to saving this illustration. However, I was slowly realised I was wrong. When it comes to the dragon, I apologise for the horrible mess and colour scheme used in it. It's just so bad, I couldn't do any shading at all, so I had to shade with the markers, but then they just kind of like ate the paper away. And so I then tried to shade with the crayons, and that was a mess in itself, as it... it Crayons are such a weird thing. Crayons can either bring out a nice smooth quality line, which is what I was wanting, or it can be quite scattered and just be very messy. And this is that's what happened this time around. And so it was definitely an experience trying this. I'm glad I tried it because I know I've always wanted to try this challenge. But I know that I'm never gonna do this again, or especially with these Poundland Art Supplies. I'll try it with some other brands like Crayola, I feel like that would be a better shot at it, like the Super Tech markers, I feel like would be a better shot. And on the topic of Super Tech markers, I went out with the intent of trying to find like the Crayola art supplies, like the Super Tech markers, the watercolours if I could find them, I don't think they do them in the UK, or like the coloured pencils, and I couldn't find them anywhere for my life. And then literally two days later after I recorded this video, so it's like a week ago, as it's taken me a while to edit and record all of this, as it's such a big video. But I remember I was in Tesco, going to my lunch for uni, and I saw there both the Crayola Super Tips, there's only 12 colours I think, as well as the Crayola Coloured Pencils, and that just made my blood boil. I was like, god damn it, why are these here? I tried looking for you everywhere in all the main shops, and where were you? You are in small little Tesco's right by my uni. So it's just going to show you, if you try searching hard enough, you will find it. It's just going to take a while. And so yeah, if I do this challenge again, it will be with the Crayola Art Supplies, or with another brand that's better. I might try like WK Smith, like I've already got the coloured pencils for it, so... Is it still a challenge because I've already used it before? Well, yeah. I used them in high school, I haven't really used them since. And it'll be a bit hard to go back to it, because I'm so used to professional quality now. I remember in high school using the coloured pencils how it takes forever to layer things on top of each other and the inventor just give like a waxy feel. I don't know how I got an A at GCSE Art, honestly like my art supplies were horrific for what I used. I did not use paint at all, I never touched acrylics, which is like the go-to thing you use at GCSE Art, that's what you get the points in, doing acrylics on canvas, I never did that. I did watercolour a couple of times and then pencil majority. And I think it was in those instances, like at the end of high school, when I started to fall in love with watercolours, ironically. And then from there I also got some better watercolours and then better coloured like, color pencils. Speaking of which, I remember in high school this one time when I was doing this illustration and my tutor was like, oh, why don't you use some coloured pencils instead of watercolours? I was like, no, I want to use watercolours for this effect. And they're like, oh, well, here you go, here's the best of both worlds, and this is where I learnt the use of watercolour pencils. I was so mind blown that was a thing. I tried it, and it did not work well at all, and since that day, I have not touched them ever again. I've got a big pack in my drawers, which I got, like, three years ago, I want to say, I've only used it once. And so, if you want that, that could be another challenge, because I've got that. I've also got some other pencils, which the Derwin Ink Tense Pencils. 
I did not know they were water soluble, I just thought they were regular colouring pencils to be honest. That They were my first set of proper colouring pencils and they, yet they weren't full on colouring pencils, they were watercolour pencils, but I didn't realise. They're just going to show how good they were to be honest. So that could be a challenge for the future. Hopefully my next video will be a proper illustration because I miss doing full on illustration stuff that I can really put my heart and soul into it. Like these challenge videos are funny to do when I can't really think of anything else to do. And scroll boxes are just their own material in itself so I don't really have to think. So yeah, hopefully they go back to doing the other illustrations. Right now in my class I am currently working on a group animation project. You saw last week's video. Was it last week or week before? Anyway, that video will show some designs from that class. I'm going into my animating phase now so hopefully in the next couple weeks I can show some more of that as well as some more background designs which I hope you guys enjoy. And so as I was speaking we moved on to the next illustration so as you can see I didn't finish the panel on one it just frustrated me too much. And so I decided to move on to this. And by lord, this was so hard as well. I didn't realise how hard it was going to be. So, I, I'm i not the biggest, like, I'm not the best person at watercolours. I like to say I'm pretty decent with them. However, these were so hard to work with. I don't know why. I think it's more, I just came kind of snub, snub is that a word? A bit up, um, snobby, that's it a bit snobby with my art supplies recently and so when I'm trying to use the basic ones they feel like a whole different mile in the backwards direction. It's not to say that these are bad, as I'll say at the end of this video they're not bad in any way, it's just not what I'm used to. However if you gave me these and told me these are what I only had to use, over time I would get used to them because it's just more about finding a technique and how to use them. Like, I know how to use my watercolour supplies because I've used them for ages. And if if you if I had to do that with these, if I had to give up my watercolours for some reason, I would still use these. So they're not the worst in the world, but not the best either. And one thing I need to apologise for as well, if you see the camera shake a lot, for some reason this day my tripod kept on falling over, which was ridiculous and it was just annoying me. I wish I had an overhead set up proper with like arm clamp and everything. I really should invest in one, but it's expensive and I don't have money and yeah, that's it. Um, speaking of which, of money, I don't know why it's just reminding me, but Sword and Shield comes out next week. Who's excited for that? As you can see, probably from my, was, when did I do this video? Was it like three weeks ago? The Sobble Watercolor Speed Paint, as you can see from that, I'm pretty excited for it. I'm not the biggest huge advocate for Pokemon. But I've always been a fan of the series and that's because I never had the 3DS line or 2DS line. So I had the Pokemon games for John DS Lite, but when they became to 3DS and whatever, I never had that system, so I kinda of missed out on a couple of years. But now I've got my baby, my Switch. I am so excited to get the um Sword and Shield collection. I've actually pre-ordered the big bundle. As I was saying, I've actually pre-ordered the big bundle which includes both Sword and Shield games as well as a steel bookcase and this figurine. So I've pre-ordered this for my boyfriend Tom so that we can, we just wanted to collect this item. I want to start collecting game things because my inner gaming side came out and one day I hope to have like a little gaming room that I can put all these in and whatever. Plus, with this, it's the same price as buying two of the games as we would go buy Sword and Shield separate anyway, so that we had both games and could trade with each other. So we just thought, why not? Why not do it? The only downside to it, um, with this, so in total there's three different still books you can get. You can get a still book with the Sword pre-order, you get a still book with the Shield pre-order, and then you get another still book for the Sword and Shield pre-order. And so I've gone for the sword and shield, so I've only got one of them. And I would really like to get all of them. That might be a quest one day, just go on eBay, find the other steel books, because it would be a nice little collection. I kind of also wish I had a Switch Lite as well. Like, I know I shouldn't be jealous of people have Switch Lights, but they look so cool. I love my Switch as well. I wouldn't give up my Switch over a Switch Lite, because I love the ability to dock it and play on my TV when I can. And that's a when I can because it doesn't happen often because when I'm home I'm either studying or doing work. So most of the time when I play I actually play when I'm out and about in university during my breaks. So yeah, that's enough rambling. Um, this illustration, 
This was one of my better ones. Well, it was better than the previous illustration, of course, but it's not one of my best illustrations going. I like the concept of it. It's just a little fairy on a tree. Yeah, that's it. I wanted to fit the quite like the theme of doing fairy tales. As the first illustration was a knight and a dragon fighting, and so this could be like the maiden the dra the knight is trying to save. I don't know. She doesn't look like she's in distress. She looks pretty happy to her. She looks pretty calm. She's like, yes, I am here. I am calm and whatever. I think with this, where I really rushed it was the background. So I'm not good with backgrounds to start with. I say this, right now in my course, my speciality is backgrounds. I mean, I can't do backgrounds in illustrations. Like that's, I can do a dedicated background easily. But when drawing an illustration, especially traditional, it's harder for me to just do the background separately. If you get me, as you can't really put as much detail in it, but at the same time, there has to be enough details for it to be recognisable. As well, I was lazy, I was on a time constraint, so I tried to do this as blur, cloudy effect. The colours weren't um, opaque enough to do that. If I was to go do that again, I would have to use gouache or something to mix with the colours. Even just a white gouache, just mix it with the watercolours, and then I could do the cloudy effect. And then the water, don't look at that contrast, don't look at it, it's just horrible. I don't know what went wrong with it. I tried, I thought adding tip X might work to add highlights and whatever, just really didn't. And on the note of tip X, the tip X pen was useless. So at one point it just kind of like broke on me, as in no more tip X would come out of it anymore. As so I had to resort in using the tip X brush thing applicator and a pencil. And now that pencil I had to keep on sharpening to get rid of the ex excess tip X because it dries really, really fast. And so that was a whole catastrophe in itself and very messy. So if you just kind of look at the illustration from the base of the tree upwards, it's not too bad. There could be more detail. I think I was really creative with how I did the skin tone. So you might have saw I was touching the marker tips. I was using a method where you can actually dilute the colour in the market by using the colour splendour. And all it, all the colour splendour in is just the alcohol ink but with no colour in it. And so by diluting it I can make it to become a lighter contrast of that colour. So I did it on the pink and yellow as well as the purple to add some shading or whatever. And it really did work out well in my favour as I realised I didn't really have a light skin tone. That peachy colour was too dark to just be by itself. But overall, it could have been better. I'm not, I'm not, not happy with it. Like it's okay, I guess. But like for something that only took an hour and a half, it could be a lot worse. So I'm not complaining too much. I still go up on my wall. That's what I'm looking at right now as reference. Will I ever redo this illustration? Maybe in the future. I don't know. I've got other things I need to do. But if I'm really stuck for ideas one day, it could be a concept I could go back to. But either way, guys, I think I'm out of words to talk. And my mouth is getting dry now, so that's not fun. I'm sorry for the length of this video, as I will probably apologise again in the next couple minutes in the other clips. But thank you for sticking so far. If you've already made it this far. If not, if you skipped ahead, that's all fine as well who just wants to see a final thing that's also fine as well it's just thank you for watching the video it just really helps and it'll help you more if you could like and subscribe and give a comment at this point if you're watching it at this point comment down below what are you thinking is it going wrong so far is it going right do you think it'll turn out well hint it doesn't turn out well and um, but yeah i'll i'll just let the music play now and then my I will be back to you again, but it won't be me, Editor Joseph, talking. It'll be Joseph in that real time talking because for once I actually did my final talking while recording it. I don't know why I did it because I prefer doing this, but oh well. Anyway, see you guys.
So guys, I am I finally finished ish. I say ish because as you can see, this is not finished this illustration. And as you probably watched the video, probably just cut off at some point and I went straight to this. It's because I got so frustrated at this, it was just so unbelievable. I just knew I couldn't rectify it. Like it wasn't worth trying I it started off well, I think. This started off well with the markers. But then he started through eating through paper. And then following that, I had to use crayon on top of it to try and get shading. It just didn't work out well. I thought the dragon was going to save the illustration because that's the main figure point. But when that turned out like poop, then I just kind of gave up on it. And should I have? So now I have out of the cheap art supplies, though, what I really did like were the, like, the color changing markers. As for this here, I didn't have a gray marker. I had a blue one which changed into a grey, which was really cool. But besides that, um, the rest of the stuff was pretty naff. That they are made for literally kids. Like the Palin Art Supplies are for kids. They are for people who like have three, four year olds, toddlers who want to mess around with crayons. For crayons, they're good I guess, but I don't really know what crayons what good crayons are like because I don't use them. So yeah, I got so frustrated at it. And I think this in total took me like an hour and a half to do with blending and stuff. It was just annoying me. So after I got through that, I just, just decided to move on to this illustration. Now, this is 100% 100% better like in terms of quality than this. Plus it's finished. However, I'm not the most happiest with it, but I think it's because I was using too many mediums in one thing. Plus, I was also on a time restraint. I tried to give myself the same amount of time I worked on this, so about an hour and a half. And I've just gone over, it's like hour and 40 minutes I've done missing. And for that time it was, wasn't was too bad I guess. Out of all the art supplies I use for work, it's like the first thing is this paper is really nice. Like I'm probably going to use this a lot for my quicker illustrations or like more doodle things I don't really care about. The best thing out of everything was these markers. So even though I didn't have many of them, I didn't really use them a lot. The ones I did use were fantastic. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Are you from the UK? Have you used the Works Art Supplies before? Or if you're in America, what are the cheaper art alternative brands? To wrap up this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's a long one, but I hope you've enjoyed this long one. I probably won't do another long one like this for a long, long while. I just said long too many times in that sentence. By the way guys, yes, if you like enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. As I said, comment different videos. Just comment if you enjoyed the video, to be honest. I just like to talk to you guys in the comment section. That's what I really love about it. But until next time guys, keep on being creative and have fun.